Third point, artificial intelligence. Here's one that gets blown way out of proportion, mainly because of Hollywood and the nonsensical things people see. There's only two things you need to know about our considerations of artificial intelligence regarding the reasoning. One, and I know this might be controversial to some of you, it is impossible for a human being to be objective. It is entirely impossible for any of us to operate with pure objectivity reminiscent of the way a computer works. We have appetites and desires. We have things that change our biochemistry and essentially our motivations that will lead us on paths where we don't even know it because it's more or less subconscious into self-preserving behavior and therefore non-objective behavior. Machines don't have that problem. Uh, a computer is not aware of the fact that it needs to be plugged in to work. And it, maybe it could be in the future, but it doesn't have to have the necessity of self-preservation. If we program that into it, I think that would be a dangerous thing, frankly. And I think there's no reason to do so. And that's, a, that's a, again, a futuristic notion. That's a biased notion, actually. To say that it's even possible to do so is, is highly debatable as well. But the general fabric of Artificial intelligence of decision-making processes arrived at by computer processes taking in information is as objective as you can possibly get, and that's the way society should be oriented. It should be a fact-based world uh, with, with, and this gets me to my second point, with as much information taken in as possible to arrive at a particular conclusion or decision. So the second issue of an artificial intelligence is that no human being can possibly know everything there is to know at a given moment that is applicable to a specific discipline or medium or problem that needs to be solved. It is impossible for us to do so. Our minds cannot operate like that. At least I don't know of anyone that can. No single mind can. That's why you have big board meetings of people that try to share ideas. In the future, you'll have an interaction with a database of information similar to Wolfram Alpha, which is already out there, and a couple other examples that are already out there that are doing comparative knowledge and associative system-based uh, AI programming. So those are the two issues in regards to AI. Humans cannot be objective, therefore they need to be removed from the decision-making process at the highest levels. I'm not saying that no one makes any decisions. Obviously, that's not the case. Our intents are still there. However, uh, we simply can't take all the information into account, so therefore not only do we need uh, the database of information available to us so that we can interact with, we also need the process to be such that it removes our biased opinions. So I hope that makes sense. Those are the two issues in regards to artificial intelligence. Fourth issue, technological unification required. People can give us all sorts of names. The most derogatory is one world government. Uh, technological unification is not a basis of government per se. It's a way of, a, of monitoring all aspects of planetary resources and processes. Uh, the microcosm is the city systems that Jacques designs. The self-sustained systems where everything is everything that's possibly that can possibly be created in one area is is there. It's lo it's locality, excuse me. It's local. You don't import strawberries from from Guinea, from New Guinea. You're producing them right there. Uh, I'm, so technical unification of the planet is absolutely dire and something that's going to happen one way or another if we maintain any form of rationality on this planet because there are simply resources all over the planet that have to be monitored. And then once you get that step going, it goes to the next step of infrastructure, then it goes to the next step of statistical application and distribution, and so on and so forth, in a natural, natural progression of uh, decision-making, uh, excuse me, natural prog progression of conclusions based on simply the necessities of the population. I think uh, if you, anyone wants more clarification on that, if they watch part two of the Iowa lecture called Project Earth, I think I explained that pretty well, where you don't even need a Congress or anyone to make the decisions about how to manage resources because it becomes absolutely self-evident based on the goal of maximum sustainability and global preservation. So that's it. Technological unification isn't some uh, despotic idea. Uh, you could even still have countries in a circumstance like this, so the countries will take on very different, uh, very different behavioral patterns because it's managed holistically. And there's really no other option. So anyone that says to you, oh, this is, uh, you know, we have lots of belligerents out there that will call things New World Order or call things, uh, you know, things that are related to all sorts of biases and superstitions out there, and they think that any form of technological unification, oh, well, actually the best one is the Revelation 13 of there are this erroneous interpretation of one world government leading to the coming of Jesus again, the apocalypse, which, by the way, anyone that actually – believes that is really waiting for that to happen. So you think they'd be an advocation of one world government if they want Jesus to come back, but that's beside the point. 
basically you have to have technological unification of resource management on the planet, and there's no other way to keep things under control and to understand what you have and to take into, carry, take into account the carrying capacity of the Earth. So if you ever run into that, it's a real simple answer. Usually they'll just ignore you, though, when you begin to state that. But nevertheless, I want to throw it out there for those that might have any confusion. Uh, fifth point, why science? Why the scientific method? Uh, our, our obligation is to methodology, not individuals. So we want to use the methodologies that have stood the test of time, which is the scientific method, a process of testing, a process of replicating to know what works and what doesn't, feedback from the natural world and physical law. This is the method of conduct that needs to be adapted by every single human being because there's no debate to it, at least not as if I can see yet. Um, if you, as much as you believe you can walk on the wall, the moment you try to do so, you'll fall down. It's called the law of gravity. It doesn't matter how much anyone believes anything. Uh, unless it can be shown in the physical environment, uh, then that belief has no value. So this is the methodology that needs, that has stood the test of time, that has given us everything that we have as far as the abundance that we have, the, the moderate abundance that we have, which we're losing, that has discovered the energy processes which has sustained and grown the population. It's time that we have respect for this process. Anyone that just shuns the scientific method, uh, I wouldn't even know where to begin with that. Everyone is a scientist. Every single even the most diehard religious person is a scientist in their general everyday every day to day conduct on their in their general evaluation of what they do, most of them, because you, they wouldn't even be able to operate if they didn't have that type of down to earth relationship on some level. They wouldn't even be able to